Okay, my friends, today for our reading lesson, I'm going to be reading A World of Ideas. And this is a small book in our Nat Geo series, and it's all about how people use their imagination to make something about the world better. So first we're going to read Before and After the Car by Lorna Shore. Before people had cars, they walked. They used horses, boats, bikes, or trains. People used horses to pull carts too. After people had cars, they drove. So you see here a picture of a horse-drawn carriage. So people are sitting in it. So that was clearly before the car. That's a very old picture. In 1900, cars cost a lot. So not many people owned cars. Henry Ford was one of many people who made cars at the start of the 1900s. Ford wanted more people to buy his cars. And this is a picture of Henry Ford sitting on, I guess, some kind of early car. Very interesting looking. It looks like it's literally a box with a chair on top. How our technology has changed since then, huh? Ford had an idea. He would make a car for a low price. Then more people could buy it. In 1908, Ford made the Model T. People paid $850 for this car. This is a picture of the Model T. So this is 1908. People drove other sorts of cars too, but more and more drove Model T cars. They liked its price. By 1927, Ford had sold more than 15 million Model T cars. In this picture, you can see quite a few of them. Until there were cars, people didn't pave many roads. But if a road wasn't paved, it turned to mud in rainstorms. This was bad for cars. So you can see a picture here where the road is not paved and it looks like that car is just sinking down into the mud. And if you've ever walked through mud, you've kind of felt that sort of feeling. Cars needed better roads, so people started paving more roads. Paved roads did not turn into mud in storms. So this is an example of an early paved road. And if you think about the streets that we have in Lucerne Valley, most of those are paved, but some of them are still not. The car changed where people could live. Before cars, people who worked in a city had to live in that city. Now they could drive to work. Groups of homes sprang up around a city. So instead of living inside of the city, they can live outside of it because cars help them go longer distances much quicker. As time passed, more people drove cars. The chart shows how the number of cars in the U.S. has changed from 1900 to 2000. So at first, in the year 1900, that's a long time ago, there were only 8,000 cars in our country. And our country is a pretty big place. Five years later, it jumped up to almost 79,000. That's quite a jump for just five years. 1925, still a long time ago, still almost 100 years ago, it was almost 21 million. Wow. And in the year 2000, there was almost 132 million cars in our country. So as you can see, the number just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Today, people drive on roads from their homes to stores. They drive to the shore. Many cars fill the roads. In this story, I heard a lot of those O-R, O-R-E words that we've been studying this week. For example, words like horse and store and shore, and even Ford has that letter pattern. Let's see if you can find any more words with those letter patterns in this story. 
Now that first reading was an example of informational text. This one, on the other hand, is going to be a story, so fiction. This is called A Contest for Carmen by Tori Wren, illustrated by Amanda Haley. Carmen liked to invent things. She wanted to make life better for people. Carmen liked to make people happy too. So she liked to draw funny cartoons. One day after lunch, Carmen was reading in her bedroom. She saw an ad for a contest. This is what the ad said. Contest, make the world a better place. How would you make the world a better place? What would you invent? Send us your idea by March 25th. I have five days to think of a winning idea, said Carmen. Then she started to draw. Carmen had many ideas. She drew cartoons until it was bedtime. Carmen drew a cartoon of plastic mittens and wool lining. They kept hands warm and they didn't get wet in the rain or snow. She drew a picnic basket. It fit into a pocket. People could carry it with them in case they got hungry. I'm hungry, what a good thing I have a picnic in my pocket. Carmen drew a hopping plastic bunny. Its job was to pull people out of bed when it was time to get up. Carmen sent her ideas and cartoons to the contest. She hoped she would win. One day, Carmen got this email. From Make the World a Better Place. Subject, contest. Date, June 2nd. To Carmen Mendez. You did not win the contest, but your cartoons made us happy. May we buy them from you? So even though Carmen didn't win the contest, she is excited that her cartoons at least made one person happy, right? How can you tell that she's still happy with the outcome of the contest? 